What is this learning model? So I'll take, take you through a little bit of that um, and then introduce some of my staff, my teachers that I'm super pumped. I'm very stoked to have some of the best teachers in the district um, join us for this journey, introduce them, and then we'll get into um, some, good stuff, some good stuff. So with that, a little bit of review or go over kind of what is this, what is the new tech learning model? What does this mean that you are now a student at a new tech here, Central Coast New Tech? So in terms of the new tech approach, and this picture very much kind of captures what it's like, whether you have Mac Airbooks or not, this is what a classroom looks like in a new tech if you were to go visit Napa, Sacramento, any of the ones. I've been in Indiana, I've been in Texas. This is what they look like. Students sitting, working together, typically using technology to go through their projects and learn. And so this is what a typical classroom looks like. It's different. And so preparing students to do these sort of things and have these skills when they're adults. When I go someplace, when I went to my principal's training, everybody there sat down, we had our laptops and working together to go through our project that we had to do. So the point prepares them for what real life is like. And so the three main pieces, the most powerful pieces of a new tech or being a student at a new tech is one, culture that empowers. Culture is everything at a Central Coast, at Central Coast New Tech at a new tech. And that's basically mean it's student centered. So things that we do, our business is all about the students. So the decisions that I make are really the decisions the students make. They want particular clubs, they want activities, they want this, they, fine, tell me, let's, let's figure it out, let's do it. It's very much my philosophy, which is why I'm passionate about this and why this is my job, but this is how New Techs run. It's all about the students and what they want, and they're involved in the process. They have the privileges of that and have the responsibilities of that. You make it what you want to make it. And I, I think that's great because that's not your typical model. And so that culture of a small school, I will know all you students and parents very well. You will know me, me very well. You'll know your teachers very well. They will know you very well. You will know each other very well. That's the point. Very tight-knit, very family-like. Of everybody knows everybody and depends on everybody and everybody wants to be around and work through this journey that we're on together. And so that culture piece is, is very powerful for students and for staff. You talk to teachers, the same thing. They want to be at a new tech and they don't ever want to leave because it's part of something special. Teaching that engages the project-based learning, which you're going to get your first taste of tonight. So instead of listening to content from a teacher, from a textbook, you're going to be engrossed in here's a problem, how are we going to solve it? and having that power and that ownership of your own learning. You working with your fellow classmates here to solve a problem. Having to present your findings to people that actually do this for a living. So learning that matters. You won't ask why do I need to know this. You'll know the very second you're presented the problem why you need to know it. You're going to have the answer. And so that type of learning where you get to have control in how far you take it, or what are you going to learn, how you're going to work with your teammates, fellow students here, what are you going to get done, what is going to be your answer um, is something that is very engaging to students because you own it, you're very much in charge of your own education, and that's the way that new tech software is. Finally, the technology that enables, so that one-to-one -one computing access, whether it's a laptop or a desktop or if you're in a computer lab, that high use and integration of technology, so not just using textbook, using applications, using web-based software, portal access, all those sort of ways that basically we as adults get information now, you as students will gather information. You will go out and find your answers and put them together working with your teammates. And so utilizing technology um, to come up with your answers is basically day in and day out how new text and how we will operate. And so those three pieces are the difference and they, they are the most powerful aspects of new tech and why students, it will be you guys next year, stay in new text and want to be in new text and they'll, they'll easily tell you and quickly tell you about their passion for it. You saw it if you saw the students that I brought down from Sacramento New Tech. Very ready to tell you why they love new tech and the best parts about it. That's every new tech you visit is like that. Um, and I encourage you, if you missed that night when those students came down, go to our website and watch the video and you'll hear it in their voices. You'll hear them say things that typical high schoolers don't say. And that's like that at every new tech because of the three pieces. Um, that exists day in and day out. Project-based learning, so I've shown this before, but it kind of gives you an overall, and you'll see this because you're going to start this tonight. 
where students are presented with an issue. It's typically done with an entry document. They're presented with an issue or a problem that they're asked to solve or solve a part of it. Then it gets broken into various steps. Projects can be a week, they can be multiple weeks. It just really depends on that the course, the problem itself, the context, the number of things. It really varies. But overall, they follow all these same formats in terms of they get, the students get presented with an issue. They first identify what they know and what they need to know. And you're going to do a little bit of that tonight as well. And then they roll into these various things over time where they're working together. They look at a rubric. The rubric tells them how they're going to be accept, assessed. You'll see that tonight as well. They'll start getting broken into their teams. They sign a contract of what they're responsible for. If I'm on a team, I sign my name that I'm responsible for these things, and my teammates know that because they sign on the dotted line they're responsible for it as well. So we work together, and we depend on each other to get things done. And then over time, the teacher's working with the groups to facilitate any needs that they have. Because kids learn at different rates, and they go at different rates. They, and they solve differently. They think outside the box. And so the teacher's there to facilitate those groups. So they call those workshops. It just varies. Peer editing. Peers will, students will present to each other, give each other, critique each other, help them out. And then by the very end of the, each project, you present it. You become a professional attire, like what I'm wearing, and you present it. Hopefully, it's a panel of people from outside the school, maybe business community members, or people in the industry, other teachers, and show them what you know and learn those presentation skills. And so that by the time you do this, quite often, because every project this way, it's very easy to get up in front of a lot of people and talk and be able to articulate your thoughts and be okay with that. And that is what you will find every single new tech student I've ever met can stand up in front of you or come up, shake your hand, look you in the eye, and tell you that what, they're, what, they, what they think, what they like, what's going on, why they like new tech, their thoughts about the future, things they need to work on, their strengths or weaknesses. That comes from doing this day in and day out, getting in front of people, presenting, talking, working with others, those skills. And so that is the power of project-based learning in the new tech model. In terms of ECHO, so most of you, if not probably all of you, are familiar with ABI, the gradebook, Homelink, your access into your students' grades and attendance and all that. New tech has ECHO. It's kind of like ABI or Homelink on steroids. It is everything that the students, the staff, myself, the parents utilize and manages all the information. And so this is a screenshot and actually on our next meeting on the 15th I'll have a person from New Tech Network come in and take you kind of through what ECHO is like and then you also have an orientation in August. The parents will have an orientation so you feel comfortable with using ECHO because it allows you to see everything that's going on with your student. Their grades, what's going on in class, their assignments, everything. And for the students, every day when you come in the class, you'll open up, you'll log in, and you'll use Echo to get your warm-up, to see the agenda for the class, to see where the resources are for your project. Everything goes through Echo. So it's a really great, well-designed program for project-based learning that all the new techs use. So as a staff, I'm hooked up with every other principal of every other new tech, and there'll be about 120 next year, through Echo because we all use the same thing. We all have discussion boards, we can Skype in. It's the same thing for the kids. You all have access to be hooked up and network with, through Echo, all the other new tech students. Same with all my staff. So it's a very powerful um, web-based software, web-based portal access that everybody on the network uses. Um, and it's, it, it works out very well. And so you can see in terms of, this is a screenshot of a kind of make-believe student of what's going on with them and their grades. But you can see up there, there's agendas, activities, project tabs, discussion tabs, resource tabs, everything that that student needs is organized in this one program. And so that is what um, we will utilize because every new tech utilizes. So it's a great program that down the road, our next meeting on the 15th, then again in August, you'll become very um, well versed in Echo on how to use it. In terms of grading, grading is, can, it, it adds some more specificity to for how a student is being graded in ECHO and, and really in the model. And so there are learning outcomes at every new test, and ours will probably be similar to these. These are something as, as the staff we develop. But not only does your student get a grade in biology, just like I taught biology earlier really in high school, I get my students grade, you got to be, you got an A. Students will get those same grades, but here's the difference. 
they will be given specific feedback in the areas that are considered learning outcomes. So things like content literacy, that's how well do you actually know biology, the information, the content standards. But things like written communication, oral communication, uh, could be creative thinking, could be work ethic, those are also assessed in everything that the student has done. And so now instead of, oh, I have a B in biology, it's, I may have a B, but you know what? My probably weakest area is oral communication. My presentation skills when I'm presenting my projects. That is an area that I need to work on. It allows students to have a different discussion with themselves, with their peers, with their parents, with their teachers and myself. To really talk about, these are my strengths, these are my weaknesses, this is what I want to work on, here's what I do well, instead of, I have a B. And so, students at New Tech will have a much different type of conversation with myself, with my staff, with their teachers, with you guys, with your parents, about what is going on in your classes. And parents will have access through Echo with this to be able to see exactly kind of how is my student doing in these areas, most of which are 21st century learning skills, what we're pushing our kids to learn because these are the skills they're going to need to have when they're adults. They must be able to collaborate with each other. They must be able to think creatively. They've got to be able to present their thoughts. They have to be able to present their thoughts written as well. Those skills. And so their grading model will allow them to learn and refine and grow with this type of feedback. And so it gives a little bit of an idea of how grading will work um, at New Tech as well. In terms of your school, well, you're looking at 159th graders, starting next year, six teachers, so some of them are here tonight. We all have the same start time and end time as in the Pomo High School because all of the New Tech students will go to PE first period because I don't have the facilities to have PE year one at the Pomo High School and allow my staff to collaborate and get together and do what we need to do each morning. And so we'll have the same start and end time as in the Pomo High School, 7.45 start, 2.45 p.m. It's pretty close to Roy Granger High School. There's 7.55 and get out at 2.50. Um, and so that kind of gives you a little breakdown of what things will be like. In terms of a sample schedule, you have one in your packet. So we'll have a chance to go through this stuff in a little bit. But this would be tentative a schedule at this point. So PE, all the students will go to PE at the Pomo High School for year one. After that, we will have our own PE, like year two and further on. So courses, biology and digital media will be combined courses. Very, very common in new text. So you have combined courses. You have blended content and themes and projects. English and social studies. And then math and Spanish will not be combined. Those guys will remain separate for year one. So we'll have 95-minute blocks outside of PE, because PE is at the home of high, they run 58-minute periods. But the other periods that we have will be 95-minute blocks. We'll have a 30-minute lunch, a 10-minute break, just like the Pomo High School and a Roy Grandy High School have. We'll have our own lunch and our own break. And then we'll have a 25-minute advisory built in. We'll be able to do a lot of things like clubs, activities, leadership, those sort of things. Um, that the students want will be able to do through that advisory class, build a lot of culture building, team building, things like that um, as well. And so we'll have that 25 minutes built in to our schedule. So that would be our year one schedule. In terms of new text, so college prep curriculum. So our courses are the A through G, which is UC, Cal State, four year, get you ready for college courses. Those are the courses we offer. So new tech curriculum, new tech courses, very much have students on track to go to college. That's the point. And so those are the courses we will provide as we build out and build our, our, at, our class, at our years and at our teachers. So a lot of courses, as you can see, are integrated. So a lot of combinations like English and social studies, math and science can be combined. Um, but it's not necessarily said that way. Napa New Tech has a PE biology health class that they really like. They also have a drama English class for freshmen that they like. So as we expand, and as our students start telling us what they like and what they need, then we can build courses around that as well. So there's some customization that we have in that. Um, but they're very much integrated courses. There are college course dual credits, and so New Tech, we prescribe that students have a minimum of 12 units of college course credit by the time they graduate. And so getting students out in that early college access, so they see what is real, what a real college class is like and experience that and get that experience, get those units to transfer on to when they go into college after high school. And so there's that component. They have senior projects that they work on. So those, if anybody's been to Cal Poly like myself, you know what a senior project is. The idea of taking what you've learned and turning it into something tangible. Show everybody your expertise in this area that you'd like. 
Um, and so seniors do a senior project at New Tech. Um, they start digital portfolios from the very moment they start your freshman year. You start keeping your work that you think represents you best in ECHO, and you build out a digital portfolio. So by the time you're done, whether you're applying to colleges, where you're interviewing for a job, or a trade school, or wherever, you have work that represents you already collected that's there. And so a digital portfolio starts from day one that these students will be building and saving with ECHO and can change and manipulate as, as they go on, they can drop in different projects that they have and add and tweak them. But again, preparing them for after new tech to help them be successful. So they'll have that, that component. They also do internships and um, community service hours. And so they'll do an internship, so around in the local area. And so that's where we're, we're the foundation and, and you guys as parents to be involved, helping our students. Typically, they start around their junior year. They start getting involved and do something around what you study to figure out, is this what you want to do? before you get into college, give you real world experience so that you know how contacts on the outside in the professional arena that you know and they know you and you can start networking. And so students will do uh, internships as well. In terms of the sports and activities I've talked about before, New Tech itself does not offer sports, but New Tech students can very much play sports at the comprehensive high school. And so the same with activities. Um, I'm actually going to have Michelle Johnson come up and speak a little bit uh, in terms of we've been working together and how are our students and the Bowman High School students, how is this going to work out? And I feel very blessed that she is very supportive um, and is very open to how we're going to make this work that is best for everybody. So actually, we just got done talking to the CIF commissioner uh, yesterday, right? So I'll have her talk a little bit about kind of what this may look like. Okay. All right. Good evening. I'm not used to using a microphone, sorry. Um, first of all, I would um, apologize, I guess, for all of the items <laughs> lining the Olympic Hall. It usually doesn't look like this, but our phenomenal drama program is preparing for Greece in a few weeks. And so here's where all the parts get built. So um, it doesn't always look like this, but it did uh, decorate a little bit for you. A um, couple of things, Ben, we're uh, very, very open to um, having our New Tech students participate on our band and uh, with our band. Right now we have a jazz band at the Pomo High School and a um, concert band. Um, and our concert band does a variety of things competing. They also do their normal performances and they support um, our school in general terms as far as sports and um, our rallies and that type of thing is concerned. But we're working, uh, Trisha Stewart is our band um, director currently and she had given me a variety of uh, options. Uh, right now we've got some constraints with the bell schedule, but um, we're looking at ways of opening up those opportunities. Um, I was supposed to put these little green sheets out on your table, so I will walk around and if you want one of these. This is just to gather some general information from anyone in our new tech group who is interested in participating in band. Just to get a feel for how many students do we have, what's their experience level, and get some general information, then we're going to um, work with you directly to make that happen. Okay? And I'll, we can talk about band more and more individually. I know not everyone is expecting to be in the band. Are you expecting to be in the band? Our band will be huge. That will be awesome. <laughs> we have a little band, but they are mighty. They are great. So we can um, talk individually about band. Relative to sports, we did um, have some uh, communication with the Southern Section Commissioner, um, Rob Wygott. He's great, um, super easy to work with. Looking through the CIF Blue Book and things, the way the rules currently stand relative to participation is because New Tech is a small learning community that is housed on the Napomo High School campus, all of the New Tech students are eligible to play sports at Napomo High School, regardless of where your residence is, okay? There is um, an agreement, a proposal on the um, table with all of the sections in California relative to having students in a small learning community be able to choose to play for their school of residence or the school the campus on which their school is housed. Right now, everyone would have to play, and the option would be only to play at Napomo High School, but if that um, agreement and proposal passes, and we will not know until May, we will not know until May, but the students can choose. And so there's, there's some, kind of some good options, and from what we understood, he was anticipating that passing. So 
opens up some some options and things. But we are very open. Come on, play in the band, play on our sports teams. We'll get rock and roll together and uh, and create more and more opportunities. Um, it's very important that New Tech establishes its its culture and gets cemented together. Um, but we are very very open to partnering and making things work um, between both student populations and both schools. That's why we're excited about having it. Here. It's a great opportunity. So I'll um, move around the room if you're interested in the band information. I'll hand that to you and I'll turn it back over to you, Mr. Nett. And so with that, I know in terms of for the sports, um, bottom line, I played sports, I coached sports, I led clubs. I want our students involved in sports. I want our students involved in clubs. They're, they're a detrimental part of a student being successful. They're huge. And so I very much encourage our students to do that and very much a proponent of that. And so that's where um, I'm very lucky to have Michelle who's here in Apomo so open to working with and we will make things work again. It's student centered. So we will do what we can to make sure we meet our students' needs as best that we can. And so bottom line, I am a huge sports supporter, I'm a huge club supporter. And so I want our students to be able to do that. We will have our own as well. And so that's where that conversation goes of with you guys, what do you want? Come talk to me. We'll make it happen. That's the point. And so those options will be there as well as we spend our time together. If you want to make a certain club happen, let's do it. Let's totally do it. And so those, those that freedom that's there. Okay. So we'll, we'll get those done and get, again, it's your school. We're here to make it the way we want to make it. So join me. Let's make it. In terms of the most important part probably of the school is the staff. And so I am very, 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 very happy to have the staff that I have at this point. So of the six positions, I have three identified on my next round of interviews actually next Friday. But at this point, I do have my math teacher, Mr. Eric Dunham from Paulding, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Jim Isbell from the Como High School, a social studies teacher. I have Mr. Kurt Payne, who is uh, my science teacher. And he's also a tap master teacher at Mason Middle School. And then I have Raquel here, my secretary, who is the current secretary of Harvard. Yeah, very, very happy And so with that, I'll let them talk to you a little bit because students, this is who you're going to see besides me every day. So I'll let you get to know them a little bit if you don't. Hi everybody, um, I'm Eric Dunham and I'm very excited to be a math teacher at New Tech next year. Um, I'm currently working at Paulding Middle School, I've been there for four years teaching uh, seventh grade. And previous to that I was teaching uh, down in Oxnard for another four years at another junior high. Before that I was in a community, uh, community teaching fellowship in math and science. Did lots and lots of classroom hours in high schools. Um, so I'm excited to kind of get back into that realm. Uh, I'm most excited about the fact that the new tech model really provides a great source of uh, community and culture for the students. Um, I've had a, a number of trips to new tech schools, went to uh, Napa and Sacramento new tech schools, and then recently went back to Indiana with Mr. Neff and saw a couple more, one of which was a school very similar to what will be like next year. Brand new, just started last year. They were five months in, started with just freshman level, and so it looks very similar to what we're gonna look like next year. And one of the neat things is this idea of building culture amongst the students. It's such a small school environment, so the students really get close with each other, and they help each other a lot. They celebrate each other's strengths, and they shore up each other's weaknesses. More importantly, you know, they really help each other shine. And working on these projects, they are, you know, hand in hand, helping each other every single day to really attack the learning. You know, and I, by I mean, what I mean by attack the learning is they're just really engaged and really inspired by what they're doing because it means something to them. You know, as a teacher, we often get the question, "When are we ever going to use this?" Well. You really know in this, this type of model, this type of education, you really know because you're involved in it, you're driving it, you are really involved in creating your own learning. 
So it's really exciting, really great to see the students that come out of this. They're really great communicators. They're really great socially with each other and with other adults around them. They're really comfortable with each other. They're comfortable speaking. And the skills that they gain in this type of model, it just really prepares them, I feel, for the real world. And they come out of this just being great public speakers, able to sell themselves, able to you know, solve problems on the spot as needed. You know, it's not like they're just memorizing information. They're really owning that information, learning it themselves and working together to do it. So I'm really jazzed, I'm really excited, and you know, if you guys are in for a great ride, I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Isdo. next year. Um, I'm a Cal Poly graduate and a product of Learn by Doing Philosophy. I've been teaching world history here at Napomo High School for the past seven years, and for the past three years I've been experimenting with project-based learning in my classes here. It's something I genuinely believe in. It works and it's really fun. Um, so I can't wait to start doing that with all of you next year. Um, over the next few months, I plan on learning even more about um, project-based learning, about just kind of the culture that we're going to be creating um, at our new school. And so I'm really excited to dig deeper. And, you know, as a good historian, I've been researching all I can about the New Tech Network, um, watching videos online, and um, we've provided some great resources for you to check out as well when you go home over the next month to, to learn about it even more yourself. So um, bottom line, I just am so pumped for this opportunity and experience uh, to be your teacher next year. So I can't wait to meet all of you, and um, feel free to come say hi after the meeting. <laughs> Teacher, and I'm excited because I get to see some faces of students I taught last year. I spent the last uh, 13 years at Jenkins Middle School teaching life science, uh, and then this year I have the honor of being a, a tap master teacher at Mason Middle School. So I've actually get to see about two thirds of this population. If I have uh, some familiarity with all of you students, so I'm excited to be able to work with you guys. Um, Project-based learning. Students who I've had know that I live for projects, and I live for creating um, an environment that you feel safe and willing to stick your neck out and try new and innovative things. And I think that's the greatest thing about New Tech, is allowing you that opportunity. So, can't wait to uh, start talking with you guys, and like Mrs. Bell said, come by and say hi. I'm Raquel Luano, your new school secretary. Um, I'm currently at Harlow, been there for four years, and before that I was at North, well, Fairgrove, formerly North Oceano, for 11 years. So I do see some familiar students, so I'm excited to come full circle again with some of the families and see you all. Um, so I'm looking forward to a really exciting year and kind of think of us as one big family. So I hope you guys will come in and meet me, introduce me. I want to get to know all of you and to know all the kids and know that they can come to me if they need anything. Um, so I just want to make myself available. And um, I'm looking forward to a really great year. And go class of 2016. We're going to rock. Thank you guys. And just so you guys know, like I said, our next round of interviews, so we have English, Spanish, and digital media positions to still house higher, and so March 2nd is our second round of interviews, and so my hope is that my remaining teachers will be identified, and then you can meet them on the March 15th meeting, and so we'll, we'll see how that goes. And so um, we've already started working together, put this together, um, and other things, and then we will attend, attend train uh, later in March, and then in June, June, and we will get to know each other extremely well. Some of us already know each other pretty good, but we will be working together quite a bit as like you guys will be working with them as well so there's part of our new tech staff at this point all right so here we go this is your first project so welcome to new tech welcome to project based learning here we go i'm rolling out we're rolling out our first project to you guys this is what tonight's about so it starts with kind of a hook or an entry document you don't have the document yet per se we'll get to that but it's a topic it's about leadership and so the question is, what does leadership mean? What does that mean if I say, you're a leader? Or what are the qualities of a leader? What does leadership mean? 
And so we're going to show you a short video that takes a look at this. It's about three minutes. So what you're going to do is you're going to watch the video. When we get done, give you maybe about 30 seconds, a minute, to talk at your table about identifying three or four main points about leadership about this video, and then we're going to roll onto the project from there. If you've learned a lot about leadership and making a movement, then let's watch a movement happen start to finish in under three minutes and dissect some lessons. First, of course, a leader needs the guts to stand alone and look ridiculous. But what he's doing is so simple, it's almost instructional. This is key. You must be easy to follow. Now here comes the first follower with a crucial role. He publicly shows everyone else how to follow. Notice how the leader embraces him as an equal. So it's not about the leader anymore, it's about them, plural. Notice how he's calling to his friends to join in. So it takes guts to be a first follower. You stand out and you brave ridicule yourself. Being a first follower is an underappreciated form of leadership. The first follower transforms a lone nut into a leader. If the leader is the flint, the first follower is the spark that really makes the fire. Now here's the second follower. This is a turning point. It's proof the first has done well. Now it's not a lone nut and it's not two nuts. Three is a crowd and a crowd is news. A movement must be public. Make sure outsiders see more than just the leader. Everyone needs to see the followers because new followers emulate followers, not the leader. Now here come two more people, then three more immediately. Now we've got momentum. This is the tipping point and now we have a movement. As more people jump in, it's no longer risky. If they were on the fence before, there's no reason not to join in now. They won't stand out, they won't be ridiculed, and they will be part of the in crowd if they hurry. And over the next minute you'll see the rest who prefer to stay part of the crowd, because eventually they'd be ridiculed for not joining. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how a movement is made. So let's recap what we've learned. If you are a version of the shirtless dancing guy, all alone, Remember the importance of nurturing your first few followers as equals, making everything clearly about the movement, not you. Be public, be easy to follow. But the biggest lesson here, did you catch it? Leadership is over-glorified. Yes, it started with the shirtless guy, and he'll get all the credit, but you saw what really happened. It was the first follower that transformed a lone nut into a leader. There's no movement without the first follower. See, we're told that we all need to be leaders, but that would be really ineffective. The best way to make a movement, if you really care, is to courageously follow and show others how to follow. When you find a lone nut doing something great, have the guts to be the first person to stand up and join in. You got 30 seconds. Identify three to four main points of that video. What do you think was the main point about leadership? You got 30 seconds.
of whether he's the lone nut, and I'm the first follower. But it does bring up some important points that very much carry into us. And how do we want to run our school? What are my and my teachers' expectations of you guys as students? What do we want you to be? And so some of those things that come out of that video that are fun, but very poignant. Being a first follower takes guts. You're very much doing something new and something different. And it's risky. And so that's, that's good. It's important. I think it's important to recognize that because that unites us. We're all taking a risk too. Everybody involved. It takes guts to step out and do something different and be part of something that you feel is worthwhile even though it is different, it isn't the normal. It's not easy to do. That's part of the leadership quality, that's part of what you have with being the first class. First follower shows everyone else how to follow. You guys will be the first class. Year after next, we'll have another group of freshmen coming in. You will be showing them how to run this school. How is Central Coast New Tech work? What is it like? That is very much the expectation that we have of you. It's your school. You got to show the next kids coming in what it's like and how things work. That's part of being a leader. Followers become part of the in crowd. It's hard to be the first ones, but if you're doing something right, it gains momentum. More and more people want to be part because they start realizing, wow, this is something special. This is something different. Guess what? You're the ones making that journey the first step. Pretty soon, more and more people want to be coming. You get to be the first ones in on this and make it your school. That's part of the being a leader, recognizing that quality that you want to be part of something. Finally, do what you're doing. Courageously show, follow, and show others how to follow. Model for them what we want this school to be, because it is your school. So show everybody else what does it mean to be a student at Central Coast New Tech. You're the first ones. So you get to show everyone what that means. And so this leads in now with that. Hopefully you have some of the same ideas or similar thoughts, probably a little bit some different ones, of your first project. Here you go. New school, new tech, now what? So. Please open your vanilla envelope, take out the envelope in it. That says confidential, you may break the gold seal. 